Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new Rensport video. I've only done one of these before on the channel, but this is the first one I've done on ESLR1, the eSports series, which, to be fair, is probably the most competitive sim racing series there is out there at the minute. So many good drivers and teams. And today we're going to look at my best performance I've done in the series so far, which took place this past week at Hockenheim. So we'll get into the format and more information throughout the video, but to start with, we'll start off with the quarterfinal quali lap which is a one-shot qualifying in Rensport, followed by a 10-lap race. And as I say, at Hockenheim, I'm in the Mercedes, of course. So let's get into the, the first qualifying lap. So turn one, very tricky because of the track limits. It's so easy to get track limits. Fourth gear, you can see we run wide, and we were very much on the limit of track limits there. Going into turn two, then cold brakes. So you've got to sort of brake earlier than you'd like to, but second gear, and you're sort of balancing it on the throttle there. And then you've got a long straight after that. So sector one was okay uh weren't too bad we used a lot of the track on turn one and then turn two was pretty neat and tidy so it's it's a cutthroat series because it everyone does so much practice and the, the drivers are so good if you leave a tenth or two on the table it, just leaving a bit of margin you will end up in the bottom half of the grid and that's not where you want to be of course in the quarter final and the semi-final to progress into the next stage you need to be in the top six come the end of the race so Qualifying very important in this series, as it is in any sim racing series, really. We all know how hard it is to overtake. So qualifying is everything, and so far the lap. Sector 1 was okay. Sector 2's been a bit scrappy. You can see a lot of sliding going on. Into Sector 3, third gear for the right. We could have used more of the inside curb there, so we wash out on the exit. Could have carried more speed. Into this left, the bank left. We do miss the apex again, braking slightly too late and we're not where we want to be in terms of track positioning there. Going into the final section, which is really tricky because the tyres are quite hot at this stage, and holding third gear throughout the majority of it. Could have taken more inside kerb there. Just about got away with the track limits on the exit of the final corner. Across the line, we're going to set a 136. What is that? That is a 136.190, if my math is correct. So. That's not a very good lap when you consider the pole time there from Marcel Chinchik is 135.999. We qualified sixth, which is on the bubble of getting through or not to the next stage. So after qualifying, you do a, a two, three minute warm up and then you're straight into the race. Standing start, which is not normal for GT cars, but it's a bit more exciting. And we get a decent start. We hold position, we're in sixth. And we've got the Audi right behind us from Mouse Esports, Patrick Holtzman. But yeah, the qualifying lap was not good at all, especially the second half of it was really bad. The first half was okay, the second half you could see there was really scrappy. So first couple of corners then, we do make a position on Enzo Benito around the outside of turn two, breaking really late. I thought I'd outbroke myself to be fair, but we got away with it. And we're now in the slipstream of the Coanda car of Dane Warren going down into the hairpin. He's gonna go defensive. I wasn't gonna fight him to be fair because I'm in the top six, I don't need to fight him, but we're gonna break really late so we don't get collected by a car behind us. And it turns out Dane actually gets taken out by, I think it was Enzo, and we gain the position, we're now P4. But it's so important that we went to the outside, otherwise we would have been the car there that would have got taken out. So one of those lucky moments where it either goes your way or it doesn't, and fortunately we got away with that. So now sitting in P4 behind McCormack, behind Sebastian Job and Marcel Chinchik, and we don't really need to do anything. I mean, this this is the unique thing about this series is once you're in the top six in the quarterfinal and the semi-final, there's no need to take any risks because you don't get extra points for finishing third or finishing second. If I finish fourth or sixth or first, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm in the top six, I go through to the semi-final and then it's sort of... Uh, a blank page again so there's no need to do anything and to be honest that is the downside of this format from a spectator's point of view is once you're in the top six and you're safe you're not going to do anything so you'll see right now it's going to be a bit of a procession for the remaining eight laps but before we continue on with the rest of the video i did do a video on Ren sport a few months ago it was my first impressions of the game when it sort of got first released to the esports players Obviously, it's not a public game yet. It's a it's a beta, and it's sort of being developed and tested by us in this series. So, a bit of a weird one. Obviously, I know there's a bit of frustration out there from people that want to play it and can't play it at the minute, but it will come out to the public eventually. And I guess, yeah, we're, we're helping develop the game into a state which is really, really good. 
because obviously to start with it, it wasn't great because it's a brand new game and there was loads of bugs and stuff. But now it is showing signs of improvement, which is encouraging. So yeah, back to the racing for a minute. Nothing really happens apart from one little thing. So let's fast forward to that. So the one thing that did happen was McCormack in front of me did make a move on Seb Job going to the hairpin, which, you know, I guess the argument is why would you do that? You're already through. Why would you take the risk? But if he's clearly quicker, which he was, then why not? You know, there's a bit of contact there, but nothing crazy. No penalty is going to be given out for that. So now I rate that. Good move to the hairpin. And apart from that, that was it. So, yeah, I end up making it through in P4 into the semi-final, which we can look at in a minute. But let me talk a bit about the format. So it's a brutal format with the one-shot quality. Um, very, very, very high pressure. And so there's a practice before that, which is five minutes long. And you, you start your quality lap in the order after the practice session. So if I, if I finish the practice session in first, I start my quality lap first if, and vice versa. So the thing is, is in between each car in qualifying, there's, I think it's a 15 second gap so if you qual if you finish 12th in the practice, you've got to wait and sit on the sit on the grid basically for it, c it can be up to five or six minutes I think before you actually set your quality lap. So you, you're stone cold. You've sort of you've been in the groove in practice and then you're sat there for six minutes doing no driving at all. And especially at a track like this where turn one is so risky, you can get a track limit very very easily, which basically you get a slowdown and it, your lap's over. So. In that sense, very brutal format. You need to have a really good feel for the car and you need to be able to switch it on quickly as well because there's no time to warm up into the lap. As I say, you can easily get an off track and your lap's gone, but on the, on the flip side of it, you can leave a bit of margin, but if you lose a tenth or two, you'll qualify in the bottom six anyway. So it's uh, absolutely brutal. And the race is, the main challenge, I guess, is, is looking after your tyres because the tyres in this game are very, very sensitive. The, the, the temperatures act in a very strange way where they just don't stop rising if you overheat them. There's sort of no limit, so you need to really look after them and nurse them. Uh, and once you've gone past that point, when, when you overheat them, there's no coming back. Like, you can't cool them down. So you, from lap one onwards, you really need to have an eye on those tyre temps. Otherwise, you just lose that time and you end up... So if, if my tyres were overheating right now, I would not be on the back of... Seb job, I'd probably be falling back into P5, P6. It makes that much of a difference. You know, it's, it's multiple tenths per lap you'd lose. So, yeah, that's a bit of background on the format and the series. I'm sure some of you have watched it. I'm sure some of you haven't watched it. It's, it's a new thing, and I understand it's quite frustrating watching a series on a game you can't play, so I do get that. But um, as I say, it's coming out to the public in the near future, hopefully. So it'll be good to see what you guys think when it does come out. And so with half a lap to go then on lap 10 out of 10, you can see Marcel Chinchuk has built quite a big gap in P1, 3.2 seconds to P2. And then it's a little train of McCormack, Job, me, Tatala behind me. So, and there's a bit of a gap back to P6. So easily going to make it through into the semi-finals. And the pace on this one wasn't particularly strong. Um, Chinchuk's pace was really good, but we were sort of just cruising the rest of us. So... Yeah, we're going to make it through to the semi-finals. Obviously hoping to have a bit of a stronger result in the semi-finals and try and experiment with the pace. But basically, this was on the Friday. This was last Friday, exactly a week ago. And the semi-final and the final is until the Monday. So with the whole weekend after this point to practice, make some changes, find a bit more pace. Uh, so what you're going to see is, is the semi-final, but it wasn't straight after. It was like two or three days after. So... This is a semi-final, this is qualifying of the semi-final, which was this Monday, just gone. And this is the quali lap, so let's see how we get on. Going into turn one, the kerb on the entry, very similar to the quarter-final turn one. In fact, we, we use more of the exit than the quarter-final lap, which very risky, very close to a track limits. But the, the, the key thing I worked on over the weekend was improving sector one, and you can see we've got a massive tank slapper on the exit of T2, but I think Sector 1 on this lap was actually better than the Sector 1 on the quarter-final lap, so I think the improvements we made, even though we made a mistake, still meant we were slightly quicker in Sector 1, so into the Sector 2 then, the hairpin, you're breaking when the kerbstone starts, on the left, 
bit of rotation on the apex. You need to get on the power super early. You need to, you need to sort of pick it up. Wow, well, immediately. You need to use the throttle to rotate the car through the corner. Through this fast right, which is flat, easy flat. Straighten the car up for the braking, down to second gear for this left, 90 left. Again, very important not to overshoot on the brake in there and then get the car to the left so you can have a really fast run through the right. Use all the kerb on the exit and more. You can use a little bit of the track there on the exit without getting a penalty. Down to third for sector three. Again, you could use more kerb there, but we don't want to use too much. So I am leaving a little bit of margin on these laps. I don't want to... The last thing I want to do is get a track limits and get a penalty because then you do start last. But it's important not to leave too much margin. So sector three so far... It's looked a bit ropey, to be honest. Um, missed a few apexes, carrying a bit too much speed into corners. So sector three was not good on that. Sector two was good. Sector one was good. And across the line, we're going to set a 136 point. What is that? 136.022. Sorry, I don't have the times in front of me. I have to work it out with the deltas. So yeah, we're going to finish. I think we qualify. Where do we qualify on this? I think it's P3 or P4. So yeah, P4 on the grid. So some really quick times in front of us. I think Seb Job did a 35.9, a mid 35.9, so really good time from him. You can see then on the start, the Audi gets a good run on the BMW going into turn one, but we're gonna slot in P4, make sure we have a good run through turn one, and we get a better run through turn one than the Audis, but we get squeezed a little bit here. We're gonna keep our foot in it, brake super late, try and go around the outside of the Audis, but it's gonna be tough, and they do actually hold position in front of me, so I'm, I'm still P4 and we're safe from the cars behind now as well. We've got a bit of a toe in front of us as well. They haven't got a toe, which is really good, and we're gonna gain on them. So I think that the, the red mouse car might have a slight toe from the BMW in front, because he's half a second behind, and you can see that there, but we get a good run on the R8 G car. Breaking late, but not too late, otherwise we might tag the Audi in front of us, and if he spins around and we make contact with him, instant penalty, you know? It could be anything from a five second penalty to a, a slow down penalty, it could be anything, so. Very important to keep your nose clean as well. And for a bit of context, I had, I think it was uh, 15 penalty points going into this round, which sounds like a lot, but there were a lot of drivers on more. And quickly, we just hold position from Mitchell De Jong there in the Porsche from behind us. And we didn't quite get the position on Marcel, unfortunately. So we do slide in P4, which is a case exactly the same as the quarterfinal, you know. I just need to build the gap behind and I don't have to overtake any more cars and I'll be pretty safely through to the final. So a good start, a good lap one and a, a decent qualifying, nothing crazy, but a decent qualifying. So back to the penalty point thing very quickly. So I had 15 penalty points. There were drivers that were on 40, 50, 60 penalty, for, penalty points, I believe. And the way it worked was, I think 20 points was a qualifying ban for the next round. And I think, 70 points was a race ban so no 70 points was disqualification from the series so yeah quite an extreme on that but over the course of the eight rounds i picked up 15 penalty points so if i got five penalty points in this this round i'd carry a qualifying ban into the the round after effectively so I'd, it was very important for me to keep my nose clean and not get any penalty points as it is for everyone but you know, there's always one driver in each round that gets a massive penalty. You know, if you if you spin someone round, you're more than likely going to get 12 to 15 penalty points in one go. So, um, yeah, that is another thing you have to think about as a driver. There's, so, there's quite a lot of things to think about in this series, and that's, you know, leave a little bit of margin on the table in quality laps so you don't invalidate them, but also don't leave too much margin, otherwise you'll be slow. Looking after the tyre attempts in the race, which is what we're doing now. We're not pushing 100%. We're braking a bit earlier than we'd like to and just keeping on top of the tyre attempts. And then you've got the penalty points thing as well. But then again, you don't want to be too conservative at the start. Otherwise, you won't make it through because you'll lose a position or two. So it's it's such a tough series to find the, the right mental balance to get everything right. Not just on one race as well, you know, not just on the quarterfinal, but then you've got to do it in the semi-final. And if you're lucky enough to make it through to the final, you've got to do it there as well. So... Yeah, so you can see in this race, we're going to slot it. We, we slotted in behind Marcel Cinchik, and being honest with you, nothing really happens. You know, I think from memory in this race, I end up burning my tyres in these opening laps a bit more than in the quarterfinal. So, yeah, you'll see over the course of the race, I do drop off a bit compared to that race. So, that's something I learned though. I took that on board for the final, and I was like, right, 
it's very important lap one lap two lap three to not burn the tires otherwise it's a long race from that moment onwards you know and the other thing you got to think about as well while i'm freestyling here and, and my, my mind's going a bit crazy is track limits so in the race you get i think it's five or six track limit cuts if you get more than that you get a drive through so at some tracks it's not too bad but this track is pretty pretty trick it's difficult because of turn one uh you need to hit the corner in a certain way to be quick through there if you don't hit it right you'll hit the curb wrong and it will spit you off on the exit and you'll get a track limits that way but if you back off so much that that can't happen you end up losing like two three tenths so very very tricky one that spa's not too bad Nürburgring the other track we use is quite bad at the chicane from memory but yeah I think this one's the worst just because of turn one so yeah that's that let's see where we end up at the end of the race and so again we're going to pick this up with half a lap to go we've got the Porsche Grand Leclerc of Mitchell de Jong he's been on our tail for the majority of the race he's been closing and he's got good race pace we dropped off from the Audis in front there was a little bit of tussling but nothing crazy not, nothing worth showing to be honest and everyone sort of followed suit Seb Job in P1 Lerner P2 Chinchik P3 me P4 and it was a it was a pretty shoddy race from overheating the tires at the start but I'm going to take that knowledge into the final and make the amendments I need to make so I don't do it again and yeah across the line P4 through to the final which is good it's a good result so once you make it to the final you're going to score some fairly big points anyway so very happy with that and I was going to the major anyway the Munich major which we'll talk about a little bit later uh, but it's always good to get as many points as possible going into that major so you have a stronger chance of competing for the championship so into the final the one shot quali in the final very important lap this if we want to get the big points so into turn one once again break a little bit later there and we sort of scrubbed a bit of speed off in the middle I think we had a slow exit as well so not the best turn one to be honest into T2 second gear again again getting a massive tank slapper it's so easy to do it's such a fine line between the limit of grip and then past that point so very very shoddy sector one which is not ideal for the 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 big lap in the final you need a really good lap to be on pole here it's the quickest session naturally because all the quickest drivers are in here so into the hairpin getting a good amount of rotation but maybe braking slightly early you can see there we had to wait before getting on the throttle more than we'd like to i mean these are marginal mistakes right if, you, if you're not seeing them then yeah I don't blame you because these are absolutely tiny mistakes but they do matter down to second then for the left that was good we had a good line through there picking up the throttle nice and early again nice line through there but we had to wait a little bit to get on the power so sector two from memory was very good sector three again we took a little bit more curve there but we could have taken more going into the banked left which is much better we actually hooked the line up a lot better that time so that was good so two corners to go then two right handers and we make a massive mistake uh, it doesn't look massive but that was a big mistake because we slid wide and we were sat there waiting to, to get back on the power so very close to getting the track limits on the exit of the final corner as well across the line we set a one minute 36.055 so not ideal not ideal at all really because in the final you need a, a 35 definitely to be on pole Marco my teammate there with a really good lap a, thir a 35.961 which puts him P3 puts me P5 so P5 for the final is still is still good you can do you can do a lot from P5 the starts are always mental in the final because everyone sends it there's there's no being in the top six and you get through and you don't score points every place matters in the final so we get a good turn one the Porsche right behind us of Josh Rogers he, he jumped the start actually so he's not really in the mix here we're going to break super late into T2 down the inside of Yoni Tormala and you can see there the red line car and Marco having a bit of contact which sets Marco back and therefore holds up Yoni I'm going up the inside or around the outside of both cars so now P3 and the good thing is is that Marco's my teammate you know we're not going to fight each other stupidly hard so we're going to drop back in the pack you know I'm going to break super late here so is he and we'll both not make contact with each other I need to avoid the red line car there which I just about do and we slot in he slots in behind me and then 
I remember him on the, the, the comms on that particular moment. He was like, right, this he's not going to fight me. So I was like, right, let's go. Let's work together to try and get back on the back on the front pack of Bennett and Chin Chick. So, yeah, a good start, a really good start. Quite fortunate with the contact between Marco and the BMW to make it from P5 to P3. But uh, at this point, I switched into tyre conservation mode. I was like, right, in the last race, I burned them. So I'm in a good spot here. I'm going to take the first two or three laps nice and easy. I'm not going to overshoot my corners. I'm not going to have too many slides, get on the throttle too early and burn up the rears. I'm going to just take it nice and easy, drive very much within myself. Don't push beyond the slip angle of the tyres because that's when they start to overheat. So, And then lap three to ten, I'm going to use those laps to really, you know, explore how far forward I can get you know use the pace of the car because once you've stabilized the tires you do have to look after them still but it's those first three or four laps I think that are the most important so you can see on the mini map car 92 is in the pits that's Josh Rogers who had a jump start so not good for him in the championship but we are p3 and it's it's a big train basically everyone's so quick in this final there's not going to be any any major gaps and this is really good. As I said earlier, I'm already through to the Munich Major, so is Marco, but we as a team were fighting for P5 in the championship, in the team's championship. So effectively, there's 12 teams in this, 48 drivers, and the top six get prize money, the top six teams. So going into this round, I think we were sixth, maybe seventh, and we were looking for P5. I think we had a shot at P4 as well. So this is a really strong position. You get massive points for being at the front of the final. And if you go out in the quarterfinal, you get basically no points. So our main rivals in this particular event or the end of the season were Williams, G2, Mouse. And we definitely outscored Williams because none of their cars made it to the final. Mouse had a couple of cars in the final, but they're at the back. And G2 were the two cars behind me and Marco. So it's looking good at this stage. And although there's a Munich major, the, the final event of this series in a couple of weeks, the team's championship finishes at the end of this race. So the team's championship doesn't go to the major. The major is only for the driver's championship. So it's good for me and the drivers to be third here, just to really you know, bump myself up in the standings before the major. And in terms of the team's championship, it's good because we're gonna jump a few positions if we finish where we are. So, but I'm not focusing on that too much. I'm focusing on going forward. The two cars in front, RAG and Redline, they were fighting for the championship itself, so first and second. So they had a lot more to lose than us. So if I could get on the back of, an, of either of these two and make a fairly risky move, I'm pretty sure they would have jumped out of the way. They definitely need to finish at the front. So I think as it stood right now, I think Redline were winning the championship. So I knew that and I was like, right, I just need to get on the back of them, make a move, and I'm sure they're gonna let me through. So yeah, it was a very, tame first couple of laps keeping my tyres in check but it does have a bit of action more action than the quarterfinal and the semi-final so going into turn two then on lap four we're very close behind Bennett we've got a bit of a gap to Marco what's that seven tenths so the BMW the bop is obviously different for every car the BMW's weakness is, is straight line speed. So I had a very good shot here of making a move. You can see here, he doesn't defend. He's very much going to let me go, thinking of the championship. We're going down the inside, breaking fairly late to get the move done. Got a nice gap in front of us to the Audi, so no worries about hitting him. And we actually made a flipping overtake in a race in this series. It's so hard to do, because there is a little bit of dirty air in these GT cars on this game, which compounded by the fact the slipstream's not massive. It's so hard to do, especially with the tyres as well. You, you need to look after the tyres, and if you make a move, you're more than likely not going to look after tyres. So it's such a hard thing to do in this series. But we got one done into P2, which is good. And again, the tyres at this stage were fairly cool. Like, compared to other races, they were very, very cold. So I knew there was a good chance of trying to catch uh, Chinchik in front of me. So... Yeah, into P2. Hopefully Marco could close up and get P3, which would be really good for us in the constructors. And yeah, in terms of the bop, it's different for every race and every track, of course. The bop, in the, in the way they do the bop in this series is better than I've seen in other series, to be honest. It's, it's a lot fairer. Um, it was a bit shoddy at the start. Naturally, there's 
it's a new thing for everyone and some cars were definitely quicker than others but as the series has developed and gone on it's definitely got closer and closer and I think that's why you've seen closer gaps in qualifying and not one car being outright the quickest by a mile um, so I think the way it is now is, is definitely fairly close and especially at Hockenheim it was, uh, it was pretty good so lap 5 then halfway through the race we've gone from P5 to P2 and a lot of time really to get our head down and try and catch Chinchik you know I think Redline were winning the, the team's championship as it stood even though we've overtook Bennett so Chinchik really needed to win this race if they had any chance of winning that team's championship so it's going to be a bit harder if we did catch him to overtake him another thing as well is the replay you're seeing here and the quality of the, the video you're watching is it's not brilliant it's not 100% as good as maybe I'd like it to be but again it's a beta it's a new game it, it's going to improve you know it's going to improve it's not horrendous it's not as bad as it was when the first get when the game first came out it's not quite ACC level yet in terms of the smoothness of the replay and you can see the steering wheel is a bit jaggedy but you get a rough idea of my inputs and what it's like to drive the game and you can see there's definitely a lot of sliding going on it's a lot different to ACC a lot of trail braking needed there's not a massive amount of body roll in the car it's quite the car's quite flat as it goes through corners and when you break for corners and stuff like that whereas in ACC you can definitely see the cars pitching around more so very different driving technique needed for this hence why I've not been on ACC that much I've definitely slacked off on content and streaming and stuff it just takes so much to practice for this and be competitive um, and it's, it's definitely been a progression as well At the start of the year we sucked big time as a team we definitely was slow compared to the Williams cars which were the only other team using the Mercedes but as the season's gone on we've got stronger we've understood the game a bit more the Mercedes has definitely got stronger as well at the start of the season it was definitely the slowest car whereas now it's I think every car is in the mix if a driver nails it to win a race so yeah it's been it's been a long series I can't believe quite how it ended in terms of how well we did uh, big big surprise if you if you ask me at the halfway stage where we would have finished it wouldn't have been as high up as we did and we'll get to that in a little bit but yeah lap six of the race I am closing in on Chinchik let's see how close I can get so now on the final lap you can see we've got a massive gap behind 2.3 seconds back to Bennett or no 1.8 seconds back to Bennett and we're only half a second behind the Audi we at one stage we were closer than this and we've got very close in the braking zone but not quite close enough to make a big send I know the Audi, from being behind it, was quite weak on the braking zone to the hairpin, so if I could get within three tenths, I think, I could have made a move, but it just didn't happen. Uh, he was too quick. And looking at his race time he did as well, it was a very good stint from Chinchik. So, yeah, it, I'm happy with P2, though. I mean, we made three positions, two at the start, one in the middle of the race. Pace was really good. I think we were definitely the quickest car in the race. So it all came down to looking after the tyres and... They were really cool after three or four laps, so I knew it was going to be a good stint. And you can see there, Bennett P3. He's actually leading the Drivers' Championship. Marco was in P4, so again, he was very much up there in the championship. I think he was in the top 12, definitely, which is quite crucial. And then, yeah, coming through the penultimate corner then, and then the final corner, we are going to finish the final of Hockenheim, the final ESL R1 online round in P2, which is mega. My best result, I got P2 at Nürburgring as well. I'm yet to win a race. That is actually a mad stat. The whole series, I quarterfinal, semi-final, finals included, qualifying or race, I've not finished any session in P1. The best I've ever managed is P2. I've just been Mr. Consistent. I, I, I think it's just bad luck not getting a P1, but you can see then the championship standings in the drivers. I'm P4 now, which is a lot higher than I've been the whole season, 214 points still a fair way behind p1 and then in the team's championship we ended up finishing the season in fifth 10 points behind mouse which is a bit frustrating but yeah unbelievable turnaround as i say after like round four we were 10th in the team's championship none of us were in the top 20 in the drivers so a mad second half of the season me personally i had three podiums marco won a race we really found some pace in this in the second half so What's next then? The, the Munich Major is on the 3rd or 4th of June, which consists of qualifying and races. It's a massive LAN event. They had one in Katowice earlier in the year, which was a, it was a really cool show and cool event. So 
definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. It's on the ESLR1 social media channels and stuff. Hopefully, I've got a shout of being up there in the drivers. Maybe challenging for the championship, who knows? I think for the video, that is pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed my first proper Rensport video, an esports video. And if you did enjoy, give it a thumbs up, sub to the channel. Hopefully, I can continue with more Rensport videos as the seasons go on. This is coming to the end now of season one. There is definitely a season two going to happen late summer. And yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Have a good one. Bye bye.